all right guys welcome to a special edition of mental theater and i thought none other to talk about the best shows to watch during this quarantine situation so i'm not sure about you a lot of the questions i get asked are josh what shows do you watch and i watch a couple you know i watch a lot of shows but over the years i've become much more ruthless with my time let's say so only certain shows can make the cut now you're probably in a similar situation if you're in my age group you know adulting and all so i've condensed a considerable list down to five just five the five best shows to binge watch during the quarantine coming up but i just came to confess yeah that i'm just feeling so blessed, blessed. I'm just feeling so blessed. I'm just feeling so blessed. Wake up every day. Big smile on my face. I just came to confess that I'm just feeling so blessed. The first on the list is obviously The Office. A classic show. It is, in terms of writing, brilliant. Steve Carell's performance, his comedic timing, as Michael Scott, absolutely fantastic. And the entire ensemble of essentially nobodies that we all eventually know almost kind of like part of your family, if you like The Office, right? But if you've never seen it before, that is a perfect show to watch to get back to normalcy i'm sure everyone has either been given an order to stay home and thus work from home right so that'll give you some normalcy of being in an office if you work in an office environment that might be a great way to not only feel feel back you know back working or not not essentially back working but feel back in that that environment of the workplace which is part of our normalcy if you know if you're adulting in 2020 so most of us have nine to fives and the office is a brilliant representation of how different people from different walks of life exist in that reality and i think it's best and incredibly healthy to laugh in abundance during these times so you would definitely be laughing abundantly while watching The Office. And if you want some extra credit, check out the British version, right? Which is incredibly well done with Ricky Gervais and Martin Freeman, who will be mentioned in a show in the future. How about that for foreshadowing, huh? Yeah. Foreshadow. I know some of you are a bit snobby when it comes to television so we're also going to have the award section for each show starting with the office the office has been nominated 145 times and they have won a total of 29 awards three of those awards are primetime emmys and one of those awards is by Steve Carell himself, who won a Golden Globe for his role, his lead role in The Office as Michael Scott. So usually when you're winning Golden Globes on TV shows, usually it's a, a solid show. You can uh, take that to the bank, you know, if they were open. Also, The Office is available on Netflix. Now, if you're a fan of detective thrillers and whodunits, you're gonna love this next suggestion. It is Sherlock, of course, with Benedict Cumberbatch, who some of you might know as Dr. Stephen Strange, or Martin Freeman, who was also in the UK version of The Office. Ah, see what I did there? And he was also Bilbo Baggins in The Hobbit. So some incredibly acclaimed actors in their own right who did a tv series and the tv series is on the bbc and it's actually formatted like a film so each episode is a film and it's brilliant i mean i think the mental stimulation during immense periods of possible boredom would be a great relief 
from this current situation. And I always find it interesting when you take someone who is from a different time period and put them in the current time period. So Sherlock Holmes traditionally is part of the Victorian realm, if you, you know, if you will, in London, right? However, we see Sherlock in the modern age with social media and texting and how that adds a different dimension that is still similar, still very much, you know, rooted to the character and how he thinks in certain situations is just adding technology. I think it's incredibly well done and certainly worth your time since you have plenty of it now. And for the Bougie Award snobs, the show has been nominated 42 times and they have won 24 times. So not a bad, you know, win percentage there for uh, sports fans. And in one year, both Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman both won the lead actor and supporting lead at the primetime Emmys. So they literally swept, you know, essentially all the characters in the show, <laughs> right? You could get the lead and you could also get the supporting lead. So yeah, they kind of swept that. And yes, Sherlock is also available on Netflix. And this next series, also available on Netflix, is one of my favorites, Mad Men. The show takes place during the 1950s and 60s, during the era where advertising was incredibly chic and luxurious. The Ad Men on Madison Avenue, aka the Mad Men, would actually be modern day stockbrokers in terms of let's say the clout in society but also their impact on the economy and the show is actually based upon one of my favorite creators of all time david ogilvy who was a british advertising savant himself incredibly brilliant and one of my favorite books is from him so if you ever wanted to get more into advertising and more specifically how to illustrate a brand in a very authentic way, I would probably check out this book. Put a link in the description. Since Amazon's still delivering, right? Shout out to all the Prime members. And what I love the most about Mad Men, besides me being into marketing and advertising, you actually get to see how things became viral in that era. And we see how when things become viral, it is incredibly valuable in this era as well. So you see the similarities in terms of society. You know, you, get, you always see that when shows go back in time. So in the 1950s and 60s in this case, and since we're in the 2020s now, it's interesting to see how life then and now is similar but also drastically different and we can actually see how things have led up to this point now which is interesting and the main character is portrayed by john ham who is donald francis draper the main character and here are the awards for the snobs. So Mad Men has been nominated 229 times. Wow. And it has won 70 awards, including 16 primetime Emmys and five Golden Globes. The lead, John Hamm, has won three different awards for portraying Donald Francis Draper. And the show itself has won two Golden Globes. So pretty impressive and certainly valid. Also a few at the time rising stars are part of the ensemble, Christina Hendricks, as well as Elizabeth Moss, who I believe played in The Handmaiden on Amazon. And also she was recently in The Invisible Man. So it'd be interesting for those who haven't seen Mad Men to see an actor that they would, you know, respect and admire in a previous show. That's, that's what I appreciate the most about a lot of these shows that I'm listing. You'll see a lot of actors who have, you know, started there, but then 
grew to bigger things, which is interesting. And another actor who is part of the Mad Men ensemble is John Flattery, who some of you might know as Howard Stark in the Avengers world of the MCU. R.I.P. Iron Man. And the next show is probably one of my favorite shows of all time. It's definitely in my top three. So we can get to that list a little bit later. Not in this episode, but, you know, in general later. <laughs> Generally speaking. And that show is obviously Entourage. Entourage is probably the quintessential show for, let's say, millennial men and perhaps a little bit older, a little bit younger in that age range. Let's say, um, let's say 18 to 40 in that range. If, if you, uh, have certain shows that you watch that relate to yourself, then you probably watch Entourage if you're in that demographic, most likely just, you know, just, uh, just making an educated guess here. Let's say, I mean, unless you're Tony Stark Jr. who hasn't even seen the show. Are you kidding me? And this is an amazing show if you're a person who appreciates the entertainment business and industry and likes the, let's say, the lifestyle associated with that. So you get to see behind the scenes a, uh, a peek behind the curtain of the entertainment business and living a life of luxury and sponsorships. And this show was so ingrained in pop culture during the time it was out, I mean... The amount of cameos on the show is outrageous in the best way possible. There's a right amount of humor and a whole bunch of drama, pun absolutely intended. <laughs> ah, I see what you did there, pun absolutely intended. Plus, each show is only 20 minutes. I know that might be a problem for Big Mike, but uh, at least it'll increase your binge rate, so a lot less time binging. Additionally, the Entourage movie was a wonderful salute to the show, the series, and the characters, so that also might be another, you know, something you can watch because of this series. Also, just a little housekeeping here, the Sherlock series also had a feature film representation of the show, so that's also another thing that is also available on Netflix, so you'll see it when you go there. And for those award snobs, Jeremy Piven has won three Emmys for Best Supporting Actor and one Golden Globe for also Best Supporting Actor in a Series. So you might want to check it out. And to round out the top five best binge worthy shows to watch is Game of Thrones, obviously. I mean, how obvious do I have to be here? <laughs> And if you haven't seen the show, Game of Thrones is a wonderful fantasy medieval adventure of epic proportions. Based on a novel series by George Double R. Martin, A Song of Ice and Fire. And usually when things have a prompt, they're normally spectacular especially if they keep to that prompt. The uh, good old fashioned source material. The scenes are shocking, intense, and everything you need in a drama. Betrayal, murder, and a healthy amount of prophecy and magic, obviously. The level of acting and screenwriting is incredible and the production value is second to none. After all, I think each episode at a certain point cost 10 to 12 million dollars per episode this show will get you through the long night of the quarantine and if you're a fan of the show in general it'll give you time to catch up before the prequel which has probably been pushed back due to the coronavirus situation the level of acting is incredible so you probably won't be surprised by the amount of nominations and awards so game of thrones has been nominated 766 times and has won 290 times just in the emmy awards alone game of thrones has been nominated 160 times and they have won 59 of those. Incredibly impressive. Just in one season, they had 24 Emmy nominations and 12 wins. It's incredible. Setting the record for the most Emmy wins by a series in a single season. 
just in a year. But just remember, for someone who identifies with fire and is also the king of the north, you should probably, you know, just bow to the king on this one. So the shows I would put in the honorable mention are Luther, starring Idris Alba, Masters of None, starring Aziz Ansari, and Da Vinci's Demons, which is on Stars. So those are all very interesting shows that you'll probably appreciate. But yeah, besides my list and my honorable mention, what's in your list? You know, not what's in your wallet. <laughs> what's what's on your list what tv shows are on your top five for binge worthy during the quarantine like ones that you're going to be engaged in the entire time and never get bored of make sure you drop those comments in the description because i would love to debate these topics guys thank you for watching and just remember the north remembers yeah i have props bro you thought I wasn't prepared? What? What is thy bidding, my master? Psst.